Hello, my name is Vernon Kurzweil, Managing Director of Extreme Flyers Toys. I'm here today to talk to you about my new product, the remote controlled helicopter car. I'm looking for an investment today of £75,000 for a 15% stake in my business. Extreme Flyers is involved in the design, development and manufacturing of remote controlled toys. My aim is to become a leading supplier by offering at retailers a range of highly innovative and great quality products. Our success so far has led to the launch of three products so far. One is a second generation helicopter, two is a flying terror wasp and three is a car that can drive on walls. Last summer I took a crash course in Mandarin and spent five weeks working in the factories in the Far East. Together we manufactured the 5,000 units of our three products and they went on sale at Christmas. In one month, we sold 3,000 units, bringing a total revenue of £52,000, a profit of £31,000, and a net profit of £19,000. For 2009, I invented the next generation flying toy. The helicopter car combines two of the hottest big boys toys, a remote control car and a helicopter in one. With this new product, you can drive along the floor and then take off into the sky. With your investment, I'll manufacture an initial batch of 5,000 units and I'm looking for a dragon with contacts in the toy industry to get this into the multiple and major retailers. So thank you very much for your time and I'd like to answer any questions. Thank you. Can we see a quick demo, Vernon? OK. Vernon Kurzweil from Manchester is eager to impress the dragons. He wants £75,000 in return for a 15% stake in Extreme Flyers. The young entrepreneur is already selling three remote-controlled toys, but needs a cash injection to bring his own prototype to market. James Kahn is intrigued by the flying machine. How far does it fly? Will it fly to me? Um, it doesn't fly forward and backwards, so it can drive along the floor and up and down only. And we can actually fly as high as three buildings. OK, and what's your price point for these toys? OK, we're launching this and we want to sell it for £30 in the retail. And what does it cost to make? Uh, £7.50. OK. Uh, tell me a bit about you. When did you start this business? OK. Um, it was at university when I saw these great products. They were um, flying toys, little, little helicopters. And I thought, um, I can easily make these better. And so I was, always, I was always interested in going out to the Far East and starting my own business. And uh, initially, I thought, you know, going to China, a dirty old factory, I thought, it would be a nightmare, but actually I really enjoyed it and um, I went back in January to build a prototype and we just sat down for, for night after night making these products and prototypes. Um, it was great fun, I really enjoyed it and we just went out and ate food in the evening and just got up really early and, you know, it's freezing because it's in the middle of the winter, but we just kept on going, it was really good, like really exhilarating. OK, and how old are you? I'm uh, 21. So you've just come out of university? Um, I haven't graduated yet. I, I've, had, I've had a year out doing this business so far. For 21, you've done very well, haven't you? Thank you. The aspiring inventor may have endeared himself to James Kahn, but Duncan Bannatyne wants to interrogate him further on his product range. Can I have a look at the Terror Wasp? Sure. I'll show you the three products. Yeah. So these three products are on sale, are on sale now? Yeah, they're in, we've got them into uh, 50 stores, 50 independent toy shops. And have you're look. looking for an investment and the company that owns all of those products? Yes. And do they all go up and down or do they fly forward and backwards? And the, the Desert Apache, that one, that can go forward and backwards. It's got a three channel. And that's not our product, and that's a factory product, which I saw out there, which I thought was really good. Well, well, just a minute, what do you mean it's not your product? You said you had it in the... Imported it. Yeah, I, I imported the theories, right. Right, so you're importing um, and selling this and this? Yeah. No, that one's when we created ourselves. Vernon. Hi, I'm Theo. What, what else? Have you got in the uh, planning stages? Okay, um, with this um, the t helicopter car technology, the combined technology, I want to create a, a range of new products, and one of which is um, I'd like to combine it with our Terra Wasp. So I've got a, I've got to, I like, like to show you this. It's a, a plastic mock-up of how it'll look. Right. We've, we've got a new shape to it, and, and with it's the got, wheels underneath. And it's going to have wheels that go around. Yeah, that's right. So it'll walk on the floor. Yeah, and it'll go up and. A fly about, yeah. Fly about, fantastic. If you've got little kids, they'll be terrified. Listen, I am the biggest little kid there is. They don't get bigger little than me. Can I have a go? Yeah, sure. 
So he just hovers. That can go left or right. It turns it. Yeah, it turns. Vernon's youthful spirit and enthusiasm for his products is infectious. Now, Deborah Meaden wants to test his business acumen. Vernon? Hi, I'm Deborah. Who owns the rights to the design of this? I do, 100%. And, and, and I'm presuming there's no patent or anything, because it's not unique, is that right? The, yeah, the design is unique. I have actually filed a patent for the um, combined use of powered wheels with a helicopter, and that's pending. And how long ago did you file that application? I filed it last week. Oh, right, so you've got no idea yet whether or not... Um, my initial searches have found there's no patents covering the helicopter car combined with powered wheels. Vernon. Hello, I'm Peter. Um, do you know who the market leader is in, in helicopters in the UK? There's several companies doing helicopters. Do you know my involvement in any of them? Yes, um, I know you're involved with Blades Toys. I own 25% of that whole organisation. So I could tell you a little bit about the trials and tribulations and the difficulty of taking these types of products to market. We started on the same route as you, and what happened was we realised that there is a global, very, very solid patent for these type of products. And as soon as we started to sell, we started to get into a legal ramification, of which we had to have a settlement and an agreement to go forward to, to sell this product into the UK marketplace. We're the only company that has that in Europe. I believe I'm um, working with a company that they've actually applied for their own patent. They can't. For, the new, for a new rotor design. They can't. There's only one way for a rotor design on a helicopter like that to go forwards, sideways, backwards, up, down. I've spent over £100,000 in some of the best lawyers and patent lawyers to advise me how strong their patent is, and it is tight as tight can be. So as much as I think it would be great, and I'd love to invest in somebody like you, you're going to be very successful. You're seriously very clever bloke, so we'd love to work with you. Thank you. But as an investment today, I can't invest in it, so I'm out. Thank you, Peter. Serious concerns over copyright infringement have cost Vernon his first dragon. It's a devastating blow, and James Kahn is now ready to show his hand. Vernon, um, I did actually try and work with somebody on a toy product um, and found it incredibly difficult because the buying channels are quite limited. And just listening to Peter and his experience, and I think also the fact that you certainly will need a lot more than 75,000 if this is going to become a real business with volume and profitability. But as a business opportunity today, this for me probably wouldn't give me the return I'm looking for. But I wish you every success. Good luck and I'm out. Thanks, James. Pleasure. Well then, uh, I've got a little boy, Tom, who's seven, and he's got um, a few of these knowledge friends I've got some, and occasionally they let me play with them. And they're fantastic, but there are so many of them on the market, so many different types, but I think you are fantastic. Um, so keep going and good luck, but I'm out. Thank you. Vernon, can I tell you where I am? I actually want to use as little words as possible because obviously we've got somebody here who knows this market better than anybody. But what I've seen in you, you are very investable. Thank you. But I've heard too much here to say it's a problem. So for that reason, I'm out. Thank you, Deborah. Three more dragons out, and Vernon's dreams of investment now lie solely with Theo Perfitis. Will he find a reason to invest in the young entrepreneur? Vernon, that just leaves me, and I've been sitting here quietly, um, going backwards and forwards as to whether I should invest in you. And I use the words very carefully, invest in you, because you're, you're obviously doing your work experience here at the moment. That's right. At, uh, at uni. When do you go back? And um, the current success of my business has, um, has made me realise that the university has taken me to a stage I want to be. And I would look at um, either doing, completing the course part-time or, um, or finishing it altogether. How did you do in your exams in the first two years? Um, I got uh, two marks off of first. Um, and my second year um, did pretty well. I mean, but I always worked hard at school, was done, worked hard at university, and um, I think I suppose this opportunity, you know, I'm, I'm dyslexic, and um, that 
I realised education wasn't quite the road for me. I, I'm always creative and thinking of new ideas, so that's what led me to start the business. I don't think this is the right time for you. You're two marks off a first. You're 21 years old. You have the rest of your life to work. I actually believe you should finish your degree, spend that time developing the product further, wait for this economic climate to settle down a bit better, then launch your business. I'd love to invest in you if you come and knock on my door when you've done that. Thank you, Theo. But at the moment, it's not for me either, so I'm out. OK, thank you. Thank you very much for your time. OK, bye-bye. It's a disappointing result for Vernon. He may have charmed the dragons, but he didn't get their cash. He's, He's a very going. talented He's going young man. To be yeah. very good. 21, very yeah. impressive. Well, Vernon, that encounter moved in all directions, didn't it? How are you feeling at the end of it? I'm a little disappointed I didn't get the investment. There's lots of helicopters on the market, and it's crying out for something which is new and highly innovative, like the helicopter car. Now, you had this rather stark warning from Peter about patents. How aware were you of that issue before you went into the den? I did my research and find there's no issues with the patent, and I think what Peter didn't realise is that my rotor designs were a new product in itself. Well, we wish you all the very best. Well Thank done, you. Then. Hello Dragons, I'm Alan and I'm here today looking for £100,000 for a 10% stake in my business, Maruji Health and Wellbeing, which has the potential to help to solve the obesity epidemic. In the last 12 months, we've helped over 500 people achieve significant weight loss, an increase in self-esteem, and they have a much more positive attitude to life. The Sit and Slim program combines the health benefits of massage with powerful mind coaching audios. We also have Sit and Quit for smoking cessation, Sit and De-Stress, Sit and Be Happy, and Sit and Sleep. We've got a special audio for you dragons, it's called Sit and Invest in Me. Come on in. Uh, just pop your shoes on. Grand claims from the confident Lancastrian. By showcasing his mind-coaching massage service, Alan Sharrock is hoping the Dragons will be more likely to offer up the £100,000 he needs to expand his health brand. In return, he's willing to give away a 10% stake. So, I'm going to pop the headphones on. And Theo's going to go on a little journey to Maruji Beach the world's most relaxing place. As the door is swung open to your beautiful room, you think to yourself, wow, this is really happening to me. I'm Theo's now on Maruji Beach, um, enjoying the seven-star Maruji Spa Hotel. <laughs> Theo's still alive. Could you just check Theo? <laughs> He's enjoying it. He's losing weight. <laughs> <laughs> That's it, Theo. That's it. No more. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> Alan's relaxing taster session may have proved a hit, but what of the business behind it? Theo Pafitis wants to know. Alan, all I can see at the moment is a nice massage chair, and I'm not sure what you're offering me. Uh, the business is setting up Maruji health spas in health clubs and on the high street. 
Um, that business must make a small fortune already because you've valued it at a million quid. How much turnover does it make? In the last 12 months, 195 with a profit of around about 45,000. Okay. What do you reckon you're going to do this year? Um, with your investment? With, with an investment. Okay, with an investment. If okay. you wish. Uh, with an investment. Um, A few you making million, it yeah. Uh, five... Are you making it up as we go along? No, 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 no. <laughs> um, it could be five million. Are we going to make a profit out of that five million? Um, approximately 50%. 50%. Okay. I've now only got one more question. Okay. Have you got any clinically proven medical claims that these chairs make you lose weight? Well, we're actually trialling it in the NHS hospital. Okay. Uh, the answer is either yes or no. I mean, it's, it's that simple. Yes, there is. We've got a trial taking place at this moment now, you've in got time a trial in a NHS hospital. Alan. Alan. Yes, Theo. You've got a trial. There's no claims that anyone has ever made that you lose weight. Yes. There is. The NHS hospital in Norwich is doing a trial of sit and slim. Yeah. And okay. it's early days. Right. Please let me finish, Theo. No, I'm not going to let you finish unless what? you answer my question. I am answering your no, question. No, the first question, I'm going to repeat it again. Are you aware of any clinically proven claims that sitting in these chairs makes you lose weight? No. Right. That's what I was looking for. This is painful. Sorry. A somewhat tetchy opening exchange, and not the start Alan would have hoped for. Can Deborah Meaden offer him any respite? I want to get some business facts because I'm a little bit confused. At the moment, you've got sites operating. Yes. And they are generating revenue. Um, the first site opened just over 12 months ago. Yeah. And that one has generated um, about £200,000 in sales. Okay. Okay. Oh, um, hold on. Um, how, what was your turnover last year then? Well, the t money banked last year was one nine five. Yeah, but <laughs> when we sell a Maruji membership, it's a twelve month membership, so that money comes in over a twelve month period. So at the moment, you've got two hundred thousand pounds worth of membership in that one site. Yeah. Yes. Okay. And the average. Membership costs £620. Sorry, and again, how many members in your first one? Approximately 450. OK, how does it work with 450 members generating £200,000 worth of membership? Some of those presumably are paying at a discounted rate. No, no. I, obviously, I didn't um, explain um, the situation clearly enough. When we started, the, the memberships were less. How much were they? The average membership now is 620, and over the last 12 months, the average membership has crept up from, I would say, from about 300. So, how many of those 450 members pay 300 pounds? Um, the memberships that we're selling now and have been doing for the last two to three months, on average, are 620 pounds okay how does that answer my question which was how many of those memberships were sold at 300 pounds you have this peculiar way of answering another question that i haven't asked which i'm finding slightly frustrating how many memberships were sold at 300 pounds um i don't know is that why you answered a question i didn't ask <laughs> The relaxed atmosphere is long gone as a more tense and confused air has taken over in the den. Can Alan afford Hilary DeVay any more clarity? Um, Alan. Yes. Out of your 500 members that you have, how long have they been members? And where Duncan can quote, 
how many times his members go to his gyms every week. So you tell me, out of your 500 members, how many attend per week? Um, and then tell me I how many should and how many Hillary. should. Well, how ridiculous of you to come and stand here and pitch to investors when you haven't got that information because, by God, man, it's your job to have that information. I still have not got a clue how your turnover's broken down, the okay. state of your balance sheet at the moment. You were okay. talking to potential investors into your business. It was your job to come on here and make us aware. Forget the Marushi experience. We're on planet Earth in Dragon's Den. OK. You would make my foot itch, mate. I'm not amused. I'm angry. I'm out. The frustration boils over as the beleaguered entrepreneur receives a severe dressing down from Hilary DeVay. And Duncan Bannatyne, who knows the health sector well, wants some answers of his own. Alan. Yes. I, don't, I just don't get it. Are you selling this as a solver for obesity? Um, our Sit and Slim program... Um, well, can I just ask you to do yeah. one thing for me, Alan? Say yes or no. Am I selling this as a solution for the obesity problem? Yes, I suppose I am. A lot of our members are losing up to four stone in weight simply by using the therapeutic wellbeing chair and listening to the mind coaching audio. So somebody pays you money to sit in a chair and when they sit in a chair, yes. the voice in the audio tells them to get out of the chair and go, <laughs> go to the gym. To the gym and eat and, less. And that basically, that's your business model. It's ridiculous. Well, it doesn't just tell people to go to the gym. Now, what does it say? Uh, does it programs? say something like, don't eat fat hamburgers, for no. example? No, it might suggest that you shouldn't eat certain food. My point is that they pay money to sit in a chair and the chair tells them to get out of the chair. The only way to solve this problem, the problem of obesity, is to find a way to get people to start looking after themselves. I'm out. OK. A second devastating evaluation and a more circumspect Alan is fast running out of options. Peter Jones is now ready to show his hand. Alan. Yes, Peter. Personally, I'm staggered you've got 450 members. So you've proved that you've got a business that could work. Is it a business that I can invest in? Well, when we're in here trying to look at an investment, we're trying to build a rapport with you, at the same time trying to evaluate an opportunity. And you've come in here too relaxed, not focused. So I can't invest in the business as presented. I'm going to say I'm out. OK, thank you. Alan, uh, I can't imagine being in business with you. And my life's too short, too short to try and best guess what it is that you're not telling me or what is the exact and specific question that I need to ask you to get the answer to. I won't be investing you, Alan. OK. I'm out. OK. Alan, I I'm definitely against anybody who comes to me for an investment who can't answer a question in a straightforward manner. You seriously need to think through your attitude. I'm totally out. Thank you, Alan. Thank you. Thank you. Having received short shrift from the dragons, Alan failed to secure their cash. He leaves with nothing. What happened? Um, I thought it was going quite well at first, but, um, but obviously it wasn't going quite as well as I thought it was going. Um, I was trying to answer the questions um, as honestly as I could. Clearly, I didn't do as well as I could have done. Next into the den tonight, a business partner's Mike Fisher and inventor Shane Murnahan. 
with a gadget that targets bad backs. I've been a doctor for 25 years and I've flown all over the world and been in the most extraordinary places for one thing. I fix pain. The pair are equally confident about their ability to fix an investment. The fact of the matter is, we've got this. Hello Dragons, my name is Mike Fisher and I'm here with my friend and partner Shane Burnham and uh, we're here to introduce you to our product Gravity. We're looking for £25,000 for 10% of our business. Back pain is a hidden epidemic of misery and complicated solutions. I know this from over 20 years as a therapist fixing the spines. That's put me in a great position to understand and to design this system of Gravity. The secret is, if you really want to recover spinal pain, you have to work at both ends of the spine at the same time, simultaneously. And gravity is the best system available to be able to do that. It is a two-piece system. One piece goes on the neck, and the other piece goes on the sacrum, which is the middle of your pelvis. And in between these two positions, it holds the spine still and it simultaneously allows the body start to unwind. You put these in place and lie down on the ground. And this starts to rock, and this starts to rock with your pelvis, and they talk to each other. It rocks it all the way right down to your pelvis. And then you just get up and walk away. This is the only product you lie down and do nothing and get massive results. So if you're in a time of pain and strain, this can become your best friend. So we've got some samples for you today to have for yourselves and maybe invite somebody to have a lie on the bench and feel, feel I, what I'll it feels like. Because I need it. He needs to lie down. <laughs> on the table from Shane Murnahan and Mike Fisher. Right, that's it. 10% of their company selling their invention to combat back pain. We'll just scoop this into the back of the neck. <laughs> In return for £25,000. I think I've got the neck of it, but... OK. <laughs> A new man. <laughs> Taster session over. Tuka Suleiman is keen to find out more about the Tusum's credentials. Tell me about yourselves first before we go any further. Shane, where do you come into all this? You're a therapist? Yes, I'm a doctor of traditional Chinese medicine. I've been a working therapist for over 25 years, and it brought me to this after I broke my own back in 2008, which created the necessity to design the system. And my background is 30 years in business, sports and sports wholesale. OK. Let's hear about the business. How much have you turned over so far? We've turned over just under £80,000. It's the first sort of five, six months, 20000 Next 12 months, 36000 And then this last three months, we've done uh, 15000 16000 So there's, there's, there's been a sort of steady progression in the last three months. And what does it sell for? £99. How much? £99. What, what does it cost you? Uh, it costs us just under £18 to uh, manufacture and... There's a good margin, but it's a very, very niche product. It's going to need a lot of intense personal selling. I am your absolute target market. I had a broken pelvis from a riding accident many years ago. I have a weekly massage to try and get myself back aligned. And actually, this isn't going to replace that. This is the thing in between. But I've got a cover full of product that claims to release that tension. I'm not going to buy any more until I'm absolutely told that they work. Fed up, because not getting I am answered. fed up okay. of spending a fortune. Do you know, I, I, I deal with this every day. It's a huge problem to get the confidence of the general public because so much doesn't work. But couldn't I get it wrong? If you line that in the wrong place, couldn't I cause myself more problems? Um, I don't believe you can. If you actually look at the keystone itself, if a person finds it uncomfortable, well, you peel it off the hard plastic piece and you use only the soft silicone piece, which we recommend. Mm. People with back strain have great sensitivity in the lower back and their neck, and they're very acutely aware of anything in that place. Yeah, but that's exactly my point. Sure, I sure. wouldn't know, is this good uncomfortable or is this bad uncomfortable? When people say it feels uncomfortable, we say just use one side, and if it's, there's any discomfort, just adjust 
just a little bit because your body is adjusting as soon as you step onto this. You got some IP over this? We have all the yes. IP over yes. this. What does that mean? You've got IP over what? I designed and completely applied the patents to the curves, the surface, the inventive step um, of this whole design system. It's unique in the fact that it's a two-part spinal system and we've spent the first year really protecting our IP and looking for design protection as well. You have a full patent over, the, over each object. Patent pending in the UK. A Europe. patent pending. It's pending, but it's, it's imminent. Do you have a patent agreed in any country around the world at the moment? No, we haven't. Not We've yet. got design registrations agreed around the, around the world. Has this been approved by anybody clinically? We are in the process of doing approval trials. That's what I felt you were going to say. Yeah, well, but the, we're, it is very serious and exciting, Peter. Yeah. Um, what it is, but the worry that I've got is that you've gone out with a product already and you're trying to sell it without actually any level of proof that it works? Well, I suppose the proof of concept that we have is the trials that I've done with it over the last three years in clinic and also the sales we've been getting and the returns. Well, yeah, that, that's not proof because that could have been done just with a normal bed with a neck brace and something up your bottom. Well, that, that's, that, that's a very reasonable statement to make because in, in yoga you have semi-supine position where you just sit that way with a book under your head. Exactly. But it doesn't have the same effect whatsoever. That's my point, though. That's not clinical trials to actually prove that this actually does what it says on the tin. The pressure is building on the duo as they admit to Peter Jones they currently don't have the data to support their claims. Which has set alarm bells ringing for health supplements boss Tej Lalvani. Guys, my company is based around science. Yes. About fact, about research and about clinical trials. And our products, a lot of our products are clinically proven. Double blind placebo controlled trials. Yes with major universities to show the effectiveness of the product. And you can't talk about the product's benefits if you haven't got that research. And I'm a very evidence-based man. I need to see why it works and how it works. And that's a problem. And just on those reasons alone, as much as I love back products because I do get back pain now and then, I'm gonna have to decline and say, I'm out. Tej Lalvani is the first dragon to pass on the deal, unwilling to invest in an unproven health device. And that lack of clinical evidence is also making Jenny Campbell feel ill at ease. Do you still feel confident in going to the market with products yeah, that have I not do. got a medical qualification on yeah. for something that affects the back and the spine? I do, yes. Yeah. There must be an element of risk there in terms of Somebody saying, you, you actually didn't fix it, you made it worse. I've been in this market for 20 years, seeing people with serious spine injury. And with respect to the trials that are coming on board with the chartered physiotherapy on their clients, these trials will be hundreds, two hundreds people using it and coming oh, back and great. giving their feedback. I just feel that, look, that probably needs to happen first. OK, uh, look, I'll, I'll tell you where I am. I am not going to help you propel a product that's not proven. I think that's uh, walking into a very difficult area that could become quite sticky. I wish you all the best on your journey, but I'm out. Guys, I should want this, but without you being able to tell me that it absolutely works, I couldn't get involved so, I'm out. I think the best thing to do is when you have that back pain is to see a professional and take professional expert advice. With respect, sir, I am a professional and I've been doing it for over 20 years and I have a very solid record of recovering people from serious back pain. But you meet them. Ah, but meeting somebody is not all it takes to get a moving spine to work. It is actually down to what the spine does and how it resolves its own characteristics. And if the surgeons well, I don't need will say you that. then. I don't need you. That's right, you, you don't need you me, don't you need now. the product. That's yeah. the difference. This, yeah. this virtually makes me redundant. 
the big thing here is that you have become preacher of your own product, and that is, for me, not good. And the reason why it's not good is because you're trying to get investment. You need to be far more credible and come in with something that says, Dragons, this is the research that's been conducted over the last 12 months. These are the results. And then back it up with your claims. And Peter, if that were to be so in 12 months' time, if we were working together and that exploded it, wouldn't that put credibility on our enthusiasm and our sincerity now going really into these would, trials? It really would, it would make it believable. It would, but it's impossible to invest in something like this without the clinical trial. So I'm going to say, good luck with it. I'm out. Thank you very much, Dragons. Good luck. Good luck, guys. Well, they fought to the bitter end, but not for the first time in the den. The entrepreneur's lack of ability to officially back up their claims cost them any hope of a dragon partnership. I don't think grilling could have been worse. <laughs> I don't think so. The world's changing, and people object to studies as much as people approve of them. I gave up trusting reports a long time ago. I believe in results.